What's going on guys? Your big bad wolf Benny here today. Today I'm going to be doing a segment on basically Superman dealing with like normal people problems that like say a cop or a psychologist could deal with, you know, but since it's a Superman comic, he deals with it. So anyway guys, uh, the first one I want to talk to you about, I don't know which any of these issues are from, I didn't do that much research. I've just seen panels like on Facebook and stuff and I really like them. It just shows why Superman probably is the greatest superhero of all time. So anyway, the first one I want to talk to you about, which I recently just saw on Facebook, it's, uh, it starts off as a little boy, of course he's wearing a Superman shirt, and he's making a Superman logo to put on the side of his house, and all his friends are like, he's not going to show, you know, kind of just like, why would Superman show, even though he's coming through town in a parade, but why is he going to stop at this little boy's house? So you come to find out that the little boy, his dad, uh, kind of abusive to him and his mother, and the boy is only like maybe seven or eight at the time. So, you know, days are going by, finally it's the big day, so he puts up the Superman, you know, logo on the side of his house, you know, hoping that Superman will come. So, he goes inside and he sees his dad pretty much beating his mom just because she can't make a decent cup of coffee. So, him being the little hero that he is, he jumps in front of her and says, No, you're not going to hurt my mom ever again, you know. Superman will come and show you and the dad's not having any of it. He's a big tough guy beating a woman and a kid, so you know how tough he is. So, he takes the little boy, throws him in the basement. And, uh, yeah, so the little boy's down there crying. So, Superman happens to come down, you know, his street in a parade and notices the logo on his house, but doesn't notice any people outside. He finds that a little weird, so he uses his x-ray vision and he sees the little boy downstairs. So the next panel is Superman pretty much busting through the door, saving the little boy. And the dude's dad uh, grew some balls apparently. You know, he's like, oh, you can't do that. You can't be in my house. And like, Superman looks like he wants to tear him apart. So it's like, whoa. So anyway, you know, they're with the cops now. The dad's getting arrested. And uh, basically he's asking them, like, you know, DCFS and stuff like that. How has this slipped through the cracks? You know, and the lady says the stupidest thing ever. She's like, well, it took you to solve this problem. And Superman, you know, he has this great one-liner where uh, he's just like, no. All it took was somebody with uh, power of perception, you know, able to see, and ten cents worth of compassion, and somebody could have stopped this. The reason why I like these kind of scenarios with Superman is because, you know, he's pretty much a god. And he's basically solving a scenario that anybody could do but nobody, you know, not too many people will speak up because they're too afraid. So I like that, the fact that Superman literally, you know, kind of dogs her for saying that. It's like, yeah, anybody could have stopped it, but it had to be me because apparently you guys are too weak and cowardly to do it. So it also ends with, uh, he gives the boy his number. And he's like, I want you to call this number every day as long as you don't, if you feel safe. He's like, and if I don't hear from you one day... He looks at the father, and his eyes start to glow a little red. It's like, there will be consequences, and that's how that ends. So I like that one just because, one, it shows you that a little boy could have the courage to stand up to a man to protect his mother. I like that when people, people like that get that, you know, superhero strength. Because there's a lot of people in the real world that actually do get motivated by Superman. He's not even a real character, and he's probably motivated more people than... I don't know, say a number in the world. You know what I mean? So it's very cool that a fictional character can motivate more people than real people. It's kind of sad too, but another instance I really, really liked about this, uh, about Superman doing like, you know, a basic job that anybody can do really with the right training. Uh, there's this gothic girl. She's on top of a building. She's crying. Uh... She drops her keys off the edge, and just as she's about to jump, Superman lands behind her, and he literally says to her, he's like, uh, your therapist really was late, there was a traffic jam. You know, she turns around, and she's fighting back tears, and Superman hugs her, he's like, you know what, sometimes, not everything is as bad as it looks. So again, another simple thing that anybody with a little compassion could have done to save this poor girl, and he did it because he's Superman, he's the great hope. He's what everybody wants to be, but everybody's afraid to be like him because, you know, they actually have to work at it. So, basically, that's why I like Superman when they put him in these. It's not when he's got the cool beatdowns with, like, people like Doomsday and stuff like that. It's when you put him in everyday, like, circumstances that 
any average Joe with a little compassion could pretty much do his job. You know what I mean? So those are the stories I like with him. He even says in one of his animated movies, I can't remember, you know, people call me brave, but I'm bulletproof. The real heroes are the police, the officers out there who aren't bulletproof, who are putting their lives on the line. So I like that they make Superman humble. I feel like you kind of have to because otherwise he'll be a so, I mean, I like that they do make him humble, and they put him in these scenarios like that. So, I think that's why everybody does love Superman. I mean, there's a lot of people who don't, and I'm not going to lie. When I was growing up, I hated Superman. He was too OP. I mean, there was literally a point in, uh, the, I believe it's the Silver Age comics, where he had a superpower where he could have any superpower he needed for the situation. So, I mean... That's, uh, that's cool, I guess, but how do you write stories with that? So the fact that they've kind of powered him down a little bit, given him a couple more weaknesses, I kind of like that Superman better than the all-powerful God one because it makes him more relatable. I mean, obviously you're not going to go lift a car up, but I mean, if you can, good for you. But, uh, I don't know. I like I like having a God-like figure put in all these circumstances that we can be put in. And, of course, he comes out on top because he's, you know, the good guy, but... He makes you really think about it. And I think the writers are very, very intelligent for writing it that way. So, again, I wish I could tell you which issues these were from. I know they're pre-New 52. New 52 because, you know, he's in his classic Superman gear with the underwear outside. But I don't remember them. I didn't feel like doing my homework. But I'm sure somebody has seen these panels. So, anyway, guys, if you like this channel, let me hear you howl for me. Be part of my pack. Subscribe. Hit the ringing bell so you can get our videos updated. And as always, guys, I am your big bad wolf, Benny Lupo. Please check out the rest of our shows on uh, Dragonfire Entertainment. We have so much to show you, so much to offer you, and there's still a lot more coming. So we'll see you next time.